Why don't you like frog fishing? I just don't like how many bass you lose. Maybe we can make one of our own. Well, maybe we could make one of our own. But I wonder what we would make it out of. Huh. Lint rollers. These might have potential. Do you think your mother would miss these? No, I don't think so. Here. Sneak these out of here. Yes, sir. All right, we're back, regular viewers. So as uh, my son and I alluded to, this week we are going to try and make frog lures out of uh, these lint roller handles here. So we successfully snuck these out into the garage, and uh, the regular editor hasn't noticed yet. We are going to try our darndest to uh, make a frog lure out of these. So what I was thinking was a, and yes, I definitely did an episode on uh, talking about how much I disdain uh I just Dane frog lures. Well, maybe I'll make some that I can Dane, I guess. So anyway, um, these are um, just plastic handles here. And I'm thinking that I can make like a popper mouth out of it on this end. And then I'll have my legs coming off on that end. And again, we go back to our box of junk over here. Bits of plastic things here. If I was a professional, I would have had these out the ready but uh there you go little froggy legs kind of like that if i can find some uh good match well i guess i'll have to do that in a little bit here but i swear i have froggy legs in here or other things like that but uh yeah just you know something like this coming off of it if you can imagine that in your imagination station um i got these guys here but i think i want something a little longer for this application um, but anyway i'll figure that out here in a minute not important what's important right now is that we get these guys off of here i was trying not to completely destroy them but this is like one whole unit i think so that might get destroyed in the process here i think it may be a hollow bodied little deal so i don't know if i cut that off if there'll be anything left this one Looks like it's got little teeth. Okay, sort of. Kind of came off. I guess the middle part of the roll didn't. Aha! Success! 50% success. You put that in there. There. No one will notice. Okay. So we need this part of it. Probably not the best choice here. I really need to get a new one of these saws. Beautiful. Okay, so the end of that is hollow, but that's no problem. Uh, we are going to be making a mold, of course. So, yeah, we'll probably grind this end down or get that little knob off of there. But uh, it was mostly that shape that I liked for this mold application. Perfect. Yeah, she'll never notice. Okay, same these here. Uh, this one's a little easier to come off. We could probably cut that off, in fact, with our industrial shears. Perfect, just like that. This one will take over to our friend the grinder and clean that up. But we need to pause for a moment here for the viewer's corner. Yes, that's right. Uh, we got, for the first time ever on the regular uh, Guy Lures, we got some fan mail. Um, so one of the regular viewers wanted to send me a package uh, with some lure making goodies in it. And I'm super excited. So thank you so much um i really appreciate it and this is from kevin thank you kevin so uh we got these things here maybe we'll try and make some looks like a crappie jig looking thing we could make out of that tying that to a little jig head pretty snazzy this is oh, oh cool so these are uh wire pliers wire bending pliers uh he's got a, an assortment of prescription medication oh no just kidding just kidding this is what is all this? Oh, this is uh, like uh, spinner material or spinner making material here. And some really cool. I don't want to ruin this by taking it out like that. Yeah, some really cool flashy ribbon. Whoops. Gone into oblivion. Oh, look, and there's a little crappie jig to put on that little crappie jig head. Cool. So we've got a uh, start of a little spinner here. Outstanding. Very nice. Let me uh, put that away before I 
ruin that whole business. Now for my next trick, I will get it back in the container. Hopefully, without destroying it. All right. Very nice. What else do we have in here? This apparently has to come out in some sort of order. Okay. Cool. We got some, uh, I think these uh, hemostats. Very nice. Those are good. Uh, nice, useful little uh, vices, and you use them for pliers as well when you're fishing. This looks like the stuff we used to use in summer camp uh, in arts and crafts. But uh, that would make a handy wrap around stuff, nice and sparkly. All right. We've got a bunch of these uh, bobbers in here. Pretty cool. What is this thing? What is this? A headlamp? Oh, snazzy. A headlamp. Look at that. Does it work? Now for my next trick. Whoa, cool. Very nice. Thank you so much. That's awesome. I can't wait to use that. I'm early, early morning fishing right there. Assortment of treble hooks. Always need that. Oh, look at this spinner here. This is on a uh, shell casing. Appears to be a 9mm. Good. Use that in a gun-free fishing zone right there, I guess. Oh, nice. We got some, um, this is wire to make spinners out of and uh, spinner baits and the like there. That stuff is super useful um, as well. What, what do we have here? Goodness me. I'm not sure I'll figure out how to, oh, wow. Is this? Oh, it is. Man. Oh, UV resin. I have to try. I, I've always wanted to try this. Thank you so much. That is really cool. Okay. I think I think the regular editor has one of them fingernail uh, UV resin lights, so I'll have to uh, swipe that maybe when she's not around and uh, try that out. What do we have here? Foil fringe curtain for my doorway because I love foil fringe so much. Thank you. Made in China. That's excellent. No, this I'm joking. This stuff is pretty cool. We can certainly use this to add some flash. And shine to some certain applications. I was thinking about making a uh, resin lure or uh, a laminate lure with um, uh, Lexan polycarbonate and uh, putting stuff like this and, and this stuff here in the middle will be super awesome. Oh, but wait, there's more. That is a cool reflector and that is one of my favorite fishing colors. Pretty cool. All right. Thank you. All right. So thank you very much, Kevin. That stuff was really cool. We got one more package here. Um, this uh, came from my cousin, actually, and he is a 3D printer, and he made up these gems right here. And uh, these were just featured in a short, uh, so this is super cool. Holy smokes, look at all these right here. So these are 3D printed molds. Uh, this is a really cool paddle tail, so I can't wait to try and pour some of these guys right here. I actually got to use, he gave me a, a couple of them, and uh, other than getting ink all over myself, I... Um, I, I did catch bass on them already, and uh, there's a short coming up, or it already came out, or it's somewhere in the past or future, present, uh, I don't know exactly where we are in the timeline right now. It's like a Doctor Who episode, but yeah, uh, but yes, I, I have got to use these, and um, and they did work, so, so this is what was left of it right here. The paddle tail came off in a fish's mouth, but it was just a great, great lure, uh, excellent, excellently weighted. Uh, for its size and shape. So thank you so much to him. And uh, I truly appreciate the support, guys. So um, the regular grandpa is going to be getting a couple of those as well to play with. But back to the project. Thank you very much, guys, for the support, the likes and the comments, the subscriptions. Uh, I just appreciate all that of that. And um, if you want to send me photos of what you're working on, or if you if you feel like you want to send me, you know, some something like that, just like those guys did to to work with, uh, here on the channel, we can certainly do that as well. Uh, you can send me an email. Hopefully the regular editor will post it right down here. Right there. All right. And uh, thank you. Let's get back to the regular scheduled episode. So we're back and I have come up with this. All right. All right. What we've got here is uh, if you're new to the channel, I collect trash, right? Uh, I collect trash. To make uh, uh, to make my fishing lure molds out of, and that's what we've done today. Because everything we try to do here is quick, dirty, and cheap. Uh, not always in that order, but 
anyway, uh, this is the mold I've come up with here. So uh, let's hope you can use your imagination station and see if you can't see it. So uh, our frogs are going to inject from the top here. And uh, these are our little froggy legs. What these bits of plastic are is like when you purchase shoes for your kids or uh, flip-flops and that kind of things. They come on like a little hanger looking do. I don't know why that's the motion for hanger do. But uh, these bits are always on them. So I save them here in my little bin of uh, plastic treasured garbage. But this is an example of uh, those things that, the, uh, that these little hangers will come on. So uh, these are similar to these guys right here. And I thought they might make little froggy legs. This is two other ones right here. Um, and, uh, and that's as simple as it's going to get. What else we're going to need is some locators. And uh, I borrowed these from my children's marble set when they weren't home. And this mold right here, we can get a couple of them out. You know, we'll place them in like so. Hopefully they'll look a little more symmetric. If we're feeling crazy. We might put one up in here. So, but that's generally going to be enough of them. All right. So I apologize for all the canine interruptus that we've been experiencing here. Um, but let's get back to it. I did take off these bigger bits off of that hanger I just showed you because I just wanted to see what that looked like. Um, those are definitely going to have some more mass to them. Yeah, we might try that. I don't know. Whatever. We'll try it out. We'll see what that is. Because it is nice to have a little egg. And I think those will be heavy enough that once you stop moving the lure, they'll kind of recoil, recoil back to the original position that they were in. So that would be good. It would kind of give it some lifelike action, right? Um, so we'll probably try that. So if you're new to the channel, what you're looking at here is my mold box that I use, my modular mold box that I try to use for a lot of these creations to make them fit inside. Um, and uh, so our next step is going to be our friend, our hero here on the channel, Dap Plaster of Paris. That's right. Big round of applause, everybody. Thank you so much. So uh, Dap Plaster of Paris is what we mix up to make our two-part mold. So... Let's get mixing. And a little brief interlude while we're uh, about to do that. So these are some casualties of my last fishing trip right there. So the flappy shad definitely works for bass. And uh, caught a couple nice bass on these uh, paintbrush lures here. And uh, so they, they worked well. So if you want to watch the videos on how I made those, we can put the link down in the description area, which I guess is that way. But this is a paintbrush handle lure. Made this one out of a paintbrush. This is the original paintbrush handle lure before we made it fancy with fins on it. Um, and this is the flappy shad right here. So, uh, But also, keeping your head down at the boat ramp, guys, I found some lead weights laying about. Uh, so we're going to put those in our lead pot over there. And we're going to remelt these. We're going to reduce, reuse, remelt, and relax while we go fishing. So remember to take your garbage with you. And you can pick up some nice stuff at the boat ramp there, which helps clean up the area to make all those fishing areas better for everybody involved. Okay, so we've got our supplies for making our plaster for our, of course, Made in America mold. And it's a good thing to have on a little bit of ventilation when you're doing this. So let me turn that on. A wee bit of ventilation. that up. Check the consistency. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're going to fill the end of this guy with some petroleum jelly and uh, that's going to make it not get full of plaster. And it'll also help it release a little bit better. Uh, sometimes you, depending on the material you're using to make your mold out of, uh, you may have to make the whole thing slickery out of it. It'll make it come out of the mold uh, easier, uh, especially if there's rough edges like that right there. But uh, this is smooth, smooth enough plastic that it shouldn't have a problem. But we'll float that guy right there. And some of my more astute viewers may notice this lake forming on this side right here. So what that means is we've screwed up. <laughs> I uh, apparently got a leak going over here, and we're going to have to fill that in. Just throw that paper towel anywhere, regular guy. 
Okay, so we're just going to fill in that with some petroleum jelly on that seam. Apparently I didn't tighten down that screw enough when I put this guy back together. But that should hold it enough just for this purpose. We've made ourselves quite a mess here. Let me clean this up. Just a regular professional over here. And these kind of accidents happen to me all the time. Okay, there we go. What did Bob Ross say? Happy accidents. Happy accidents. As long as you stay happy about it, I guess it's fine. All right. Clean this dog off. Try that again. Perfect. All right. Beautiful. That's setting really nice. Okay. This is like reverse operation. If you remember that board game. And it's okay if you've never made one of these before that these aren't connected uh, with plaster molds. They're very forgiving. You can carve out that sort of stuff uh, after the fact. Let's see if we space this out right or correctly. Whammo slammo. This piece is a little weird right here. I don't know why I left that on there, but whatever. It's done now. It doesn't matter. The bass won't notice, I bet you. Okay. Pretty simple layout, right? Pretty standard stuff. We've got our lint brush roller handles in there. We've got our uh, hangers from our flip-flops and whatnots. Feeling lucky. Okay. Locator, locator. Locator, locator, and marble. All right. So there those are. We will let this dog dry, and then we'll be back for the second layer. Okay, regular viewers, we're back. Our mold has dried. So we're going to use our favorite awl and remove the locators. It's important to use your favorite awl, because otherwise it's not as fun. I'm going to put a coating of petroleum jelly on this guy so that it acts as a nice mold release. I've tried cooking spray in the past. I don't know if that's causing problems with my mold. I'm not sure yet. Um, I have had some problems with some molds after using cooking spray as a uh, mold release. I don't know if it's just I was doing it wrong, which is very possible. But petroleum jelly seems to work really well. And it's uh, employing the kiss, kiss method which is keep it simple, silly goose, right? Which is what I need to do. Every time I try to get beyond regular, it's just chaos, it just devolves into chaos. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll use a smaller brush to get in the finer details here. Just wanna make sure I've got some in the corners just to make sure that uh, there's no leaking out of our mold. And then if you want, you can put, just to save you a little time after the fact in post-production, I usually put a little like right over where the top of the lure is at the top of the mold because um, sometimes it doesn't fit quite flush against your mold face and uh, or your mold box face, I guess that is. So that plaster will get in behind it or whatever, whatever mold making material, silicone, whatever, will get in behind it there. And that just kind of saves you from having to try and uh, scrape off a little bit. But it looks like we got good popping frog mouths shapes. So we should be all set. There's just that little bit of gap. I don't know if the camera can pick that up right in there. But trust me, there is one or else I wouldn't be wasting my time trying to fill it in. But this petroleum jelly is stout enough that it'll just sit in there on its own. And the plaster will form around it so um, yes if you brush your mold down with petroleum jelly you will get these striations from the brush in your mold but it also helps it pull off the uh, pull off of it better I've tried before on a fish mold um, if you really 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 take your time and go bananas you can kind of make those striations look like uh, they're supposed to be there, lateral lines or, uh, um, I'm trying to say, what do fish have? Scales, that's the word, like a scale pattern. That's all up to you. All right, so that's done. Now we're going to mix up our plaster. Okay, and our guest of honor is back. 
Dap Plaster of Paris. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Round of applause. Ooh. You're so kind. All right. This is probably more than enough of uh, junk in the water. What in the world? What is that? Sea monkeys? What's going on in there? Okay. But, uh, all right. Let's mix up this plaster and sea monkeys concoction. Oh, why do I always do that? Momentum guy. <laughs> Remember momentum. Oh, jeez. I'm trying to center it in the shot. Just for you guys, the regular viewers out there. We're just going to do this every time now and just make a, a big old mess. So I'll do this for a while, rocking it and uh, <clears throat> letting those bubbles come out. I've used an air compressor in the past, but uh, things have changed. I don't have the... Uh, it doesn't work anymore. All right, we'll be back when this is set up. All right, our mold is set up. The regular editor is here. Hi. She's enthusiastic about it, as you can as you can well tell. Let's unbox our Made in America mold. Oh, you don't know what this is, do you? You're going to be all excited here. We're reducing, reusing, and recycling. That doesn't surprise me. And rebuilding your lint rollers. My lint rollers? Do yeah. they need to be rebuilt? Well, they do now. It, it'll be okay. You'll see. I'm a professional. Mm -hmm. A regular professional. A regular professional. Now for my next trick, I will open this mold up. There we go. Ta-da! Lint oh, rollers. my. <laughs> but they look like frogs, right? Sort of? See yeah. the frogginess to it? Okay. This apparently has got some huge bubbles in it, but that'll be okay. Because why? Uh, super glue and uh, baking soda. And who won't notice? The best. You're so well trained. All mm -hmm. right. So we're just going to let this set here like this and let it dry. So let's get our pyramids out, please. Oh, look at the my lovely assistant putting the pyramids out. I don't know how you want them. How the family that puts pyramids out okay, together. Regular viewers, these guys have had plenty of time to set up. So we are going to pull out the handles from our lint rollers and the little leggy doos. All right. Amen. We got it all out. A little bit right there. So there's going to be a little flashing right there. But I got a super surprise for you. A few videos ago, I made the Flappy Shad. Um, and this was the mold for it. And if you'll recall, one side came out nice and the other side came out ugly. Well, I had said in that video I was going to try to put a skim coat on that mold. And I just wanted to show you what the results were. So if you saw that video, I don't know how well you could see it. Uh, one of my best good friends showed me how to make a better video on my phone. So this has more detail. But speaking of more detail, that is more detail. So I brushed a very light coat of uh, Plaster of Paris on this one. It filled in a lot of the voids and imperfections on that side uh, where it doesn't matter. But then I pressed my mold master back in, brushed away the excess out here to, like I said, fill in those voids um, and close the mold back up. I'd also put this, the sprue uh, part back in there. And uh, we have a very detailed fish. So now we have two very detailed fishes. Closes back up nicely. I think this is going to work just fine. I'm excited to try it out. So we'll let that dry further. These came out all right. So you can see we have these bubbles right here, but now we know how to fix those if we care to. So with a skim coat, we can press our stuff back in and, um, and it'll fill those voids in. So pretty good stuff. Okay, we'll be back when this is dried and then we'll try to shoot it to here see what we do. So we've let these dry a little bit. So if you've never seen how we do this before, so we do still have to carve out just a little bit here. I just use a flathead screwdriver and it just pulls out that easy. And you can get super creative with this if you'd like and add different designs and shapes. I've done that before. You can check out how I made the paintbrush handle lure and um, was able to put some scale patterns in it. I do fin rays like this as well. But here we're just trying to take off these edges. We're just gonna keep this a simple shape I always like to do that first, and then if I like what the lure turned into, then I'll go back and 
maybe add some details to it or something like that. Okay, so where those two bits um, held up the lure, obviously they didn't make contact. So we're just going to cut a little channel there so that they connect. I think that's pretty much it for that one. Same as these over here. Just cut a little channel for that plastisol to throw flow through. These ones, the lips don't even look like they really need any carbon on them, so that's pretty good. Okay, and then we're going to take them over here to the griddle. Not that you knew that it was over there, it doesn't matter, but it is. Uh, and I'm going to put them on the griddle just to let them dry a little more. I'll turn that up to like 400, uh, which I'm sure it's not achieving that temperature because it's a cheap, cheap griddle, and uh, let them cook. And then we'll be back. Next step, we'll be pouring these guys. Okay, regular viewers, we are back with Operation Frog. So I've coated these uh, mold in uh, wood glue. We've got our clamps ready, plastics in the microwave. So we are going to spray this a little bit of cooking spray. It doesn't really need it, but it just helps it have a shinier uh, finish, uh, more like you would get out of a um, aluminum machined mold. Okay, clamp, clamp. I think I think we'll be good with two clamps. We'll just try it with just the two clamps. Those are pretty heavy duty. Not heavy a duty enough that they're not going to. So, why don't you throw those in the bucket for now? Yes, sir. And I'm supposed to put gloves on, right? Yes, that's very true. Very true. Okay, dude. your gloves are over there, buddy. Why don't you get those regular assistant of mine? Yes, sir. Okay, I do have more colors than I'm going to use right now because we're going to try a experiment if this works. There's the one we're looking for. Here we go. Safety gloves. Okay, look out, buddy. All right, turn that fan on low, please, for improved ventilation purposes. This is our froggy color. Yep, very, it actually is very froggy. It's very froggy. The regular assistant thinks it's very froggy. It seems to be successful. We'll let that cool, and then we'll be back. Okay, I think we are cool. Let's see how our first run went. Uh, we got some flashing. flashing out the side. Flashing's not bad. We can fix it with our friend's scissors, right? Yes. We just want to make sure we filled our mold up. And we did. Wow. All right, regular viewers. Beautiful we've got, frogs. they look way more frog-esque than, uh, than I thought they would in the mold there when we were doing that originally. So let's get these dogs out of here. Okay, They're I need you to, I mean frogs, not dogs. <laughs> it's not my fault. Okay, the regular assistant is going to, with the curved blade out, yes. cut along that edge, right? Yes, I am going okay, to. Okay, he's not going to cut up the legs. He's not going to cut off the legs. Yes. Okay, we're gonna try Hopefully. something, something new here. See if we can give this guy a silver belly. Try and advance, pour, uh, in the uh, regular shop here. Advance pouring in the regular shop is what we're trying to do. We should probably leave it down like that, so it doesn't pour down into the legs too far and get in the way. And yep, we are cooking up my favorite color. Favorite fishing little color chartreuse, which is hot enough. So we'll leave that one out of the Nuka Wave. How's it coming over there, regular assistants? Yep. So far, we got the first frog done. The first frog wow. of many, hopefully. Let's hope that uh, works. Is that okay? Okay. We're going to put this guy up now. I think it's okay. Clamp our clamper dues on there again. That seemed to work well. Do you want to keep the sprue on there? You want that? Uh, well, no, that's part of the frog. Oh. That's the magic of this mold is the sprue is the frog's uh, little popper mouth. Popper mouth? Yep. So that's our uh, oh. that's our frog here. Okay. So see this flashing along the tail here? I mean, the, the legs? Mm -hmm. Look right yes. here. Can you trim that off for me a little nicer, please? Okay. Uh, can you stand by while I do this, please? Yes, sir. Standing by. Okay. Step Pull back. Off camera. Live and on camera. Can we do it live? Hopefully that poured past all that silver belly and hopefully it incorporated it. Time will tell. Oh, all right, we're going to do some trimmage here in the regular shop and we'll be back when this guy is ready to unbox or mold. or whatever. Okay, our second round has had time to uh, cool here. So let's open this up. Pulled off the uh, flashing around the top here. This is our two-tone. Two-tone. Look at that. Beautiful. A two-tone frog. So a little silver belly. You'd probably be better with white, but I don't have white, so that's what you get for nothing. But 
this is adhered nicely. There is no cold crack, cold cracking. That's the word I'm looking for. No cold cracking. A little bit of flashing that uh, my child labor over here is going to take care of. Yes. Thank you. This one looks excellent as well. I'll try to help him out here and cut that off. Quick, dirty, and cheap frogs, guys. Look at that. A yes. lint roller to a usable frog. And uh, when you see the pool test, you will see that uh, this is going to be a usable bait for sure. So I think we made a winner. I'm pretty excited about it. What do you think, there, little guy? I like that. And like one of the uh, first big bass we ever caught, or you ever caught, yes. was on a what? Frog. And it was like stuck in a pile of weeds. And I have to tell the truth. I didn't think you had anything. I thought you just got hung up again. But you're all excited. Remember that? Yeah. You're like, Dad, I got one. I'm like, yeah, 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 kid. <laughs> we were in a kayak, and two-person kayak. And yes, a, this was before we had We water. paddled over there. And uh, I'm fishing through the weeds next to the snakes and alligators and spiders oh, and what uh, everything you? else. And uh, I reached in, and I pulled up, and what did I say? Look what you just caught. And what did you caught? A big bass. Big old barse there on a frog. So we're hoping to recreate that with one of our homemade frogs. Okay, let's try a uh, chartreuse and green. We'll be right back. All right, so I've got my chartreuse mixed up here. We're going to pour that in the belly. I thought you are doing the legs, too. We'll see if we can go, you know, this might be a little over the top here. We might... Uh, we might have gone too far with that, but what the heck. Oh, I'm supposed to have my regular gloves on, aren't I? Oh. Okay. I... Pretend you saw that, like, uh, but my hands look like more like this. Okay, that's that was uh, that was a terrible example of what not to do. That's what that was. Uh, safety precautions there of what not to do. Also very funny. Mm -hmm. Nothing funny like a third degree burn, I guess. Yes. That's funny. No, that's you're not... weird, kid. <laughs> okay. World. What in the world indeed? Let's mix this dog up. Dog, plastic! Dog. Mix this plastic up. Can't get away with nothing. It's my own show. All right, let's cook us again. It's my own show, and I can't even get away with anything. I'm like the Rodney Dangerfield of fishing show or fishing lure making. All right. What are you laughing at? All right. Don't cut his face off. We need that. Hello. Hello. Youngest regular assistant. Hello, people. All right. Let's put that there. The world's greatest right. thing cutest it's the, regular um, assistant. The world's cutest regular assistant. Huh? And and most humble, too. All right. Oh. It's the legs that we got to really worry about. All right. We're going to keep that cooking. We'll be right back. All right. Let's pour this. That could be a mess. I don't know if that's going to work or not. That didn't feel right, but what do I know? Okay, be careful, buddy. That's super hot. All right, we're okay, back. I don't know if this one worked or not. We will see. Okay. Oh, we did get it. Okay. Yay! Not as perfect as the other one, because you can still see some of the chartreuse came through, but I don't think the bass will notice. Yes. But I think that's a good... Look at that. We got it in the legs and everything here. We got an awful lot of flashing on this one. That was weird. It really felt like it did not go in. Shows you what I know. So it got it went over that um, instead of a but whatever. No big whoop, right? Yep. No. But big we've whoop. got one, two, three, four, five, six of these guys pretty quickly, and uh, I'm pretty excited about how this mold worked out. So, uh, regular assistant, get chopping. Yes, sir. Another chopper. Put that back in there, and then uh, we're going to focus on cleaning this mess up. And seeing if we can't pretty these frogs up a little bit. All right? All, All right. right. So we are to the arts and crafts part, I guess, here. Or the, the decorative portion of the uh, of this. I'll just drop something off into oblivion. Okay. The uh, regular assistant has finished his job. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So we are going to try to put some eyes. Now we're on the clock there. We have the regular editor out here to watch what we did with her uh, rollers. Her lint rollers, so hopefully uh, she'll approve that it was worth the uh, destruction and theft. I do get them back, don't I? Of, uh, well, it, it, it sort of. We'll we'll cross that bridge here in a minute. They are 
They're frog esque. They're frog esque. Frogs. Okay, uh, excuse me, regular assistant. Green there. And I, green. To, I have frog eyes that I've never had got to use on anything. There, huh? Does that look like yeah, Kermit? Yeah, it looks like Kermit. Kermit the Frog. Oh, we're going to try to put bigger eyes on it. Look at that. Yeah. There's a big one, huh? Yep. I guess the microwave's mad at us. And so's the regular dog. Yeah, she wants to come out. Yeah, what see. does she know? All right. Yeah. Oops. She knows oh. we're out here. That's what she knows. Sure knows. Sure knows? Yep. What the heck do you say? Sure knows. What? Sure knows. <laughs> I right. see. Is sure knows? Mm -hmm. Next to sure ears. <laughs> I thought I said she sure knows what I said. No, that's not what she said. <laughs> uh oh, I've made the fatal error. Oh no. Almost glued my fingers to it. Okay, there's our eyes that have it. So um, the regular editor who just left um, gave me her makeup. Uh, that, that sounds weird, but uh, she didn't use any of this stuff here. So the frogs around here have a sort of gold stripe that's not really gold is that gold uh, sort of gold stripe so uh, you can pilfer your wife's makeup and uh, paint your lures with it all right now for the final I have uh, these pencils you gave me here what is what is the what are these guys uh, brow and liner pencils. So like you write on your brow with these. What are these for? Eyeliner. It doesn't... Oh. To fill in your eyebrows. To fill in your eyebrows? Yeah. Well, luckily for you, I'm Italian, so we only have the one. So I don't really need to do that. But we're going to take this here brow liner and we're going to make dots on our frog, frog spots. All right, it's time for a clear dip-a-thon. Got a little bit of bubbles in there, but it'll probably be all right. So these are going to be difficult, I think, because I got to hold the legs up whilst I dip it. So like one whole package. One, two, three. So you're only dipping part of it? I'm going to dip the head again. Yes, I'm not going to dip the legs. Um, I just think it'll be a colossal mess. And I'll do that this many more times, and I'll show you what we get. There they are on the drying rack, guys. If I could get the camera to... There we go. I think that's pretty froggy. I'm not trying to toot my own horn here or nothing. I'm just saying I am pleased with how those came out. I think that will work. There they are, our froggy lures. I hope you guys like it. Okay, we're back, regular viewers. The end is here, and so we face the final curtain. I have no regrets with this one, because I think we got some outstanding results. Uh, these frogs came out very nice. I was very happy with how they came out. It all just worked, uh, worked well. So we got some two-tone frogs here. We got a silver belly on this guy. Uh, we've got our little gold stripe and some dots on it. Um, we're able to piece this together with a lot of garbage here, guys. Dollar Tree uh, lint brushes with uh, some of my wife's uh, makeup that she didn't want and some uh, eye pencils or whatever she called them that she didn't want either. I had these frog eyes forever with nothing to put them on. So we finally made some frogs. Um, you know, here's another two-tone belly with some two-tone feet. Uh, so that's pretty cool and pretty neat. And that was a rhyme for free. Um, I was uh, disappointed. These didn't flap as much as I hoped uh, on the flappage scale. It's a zero uh, when you weren't popping, if you're just pulling it through the water. When you pop, they did uh, wiggle. I guess that represents wiggle uh, enough, so that was nice. But this style here, this one with the silver belly, uh, will definitely wiggle well or, or, or twist while I, what am I saying, flap. Flappage scale should be high when I pull this one through the water. Um, and uh, because I use this as my jig trailer, this style, thing so i already know it's going to be flappy and have some nice flappage um again i like that they had a nice pop 
You could pop it slow, pop it fast. You could walk the dog with them. They do sink. Uh, they are not floating frogs, but um, they sink slow enough that you just pull them again and they come right back up to the top. But the heavy cover that I'll be fishing these in, that's not a bad thing. They'll sit on top. And then I like it when it like goes between pads and then the stuff kind of slowly sinks down. Sometimes that triggers a nice bite as well. It's going to be a win-win all the way around. Like I said, I'm using a number eight. I believe it's a number eight beast hook on these with a screw lock. And I'm going to come through and text pose it here. I clear dipped them as you saw, and I clear dipped the heads thrice so that the eyes would stay on because the eyes have it. Um, the eyes are mostly for me, but, you know, hey, that was half the fun is seeing how nice we could make them look. I hope you did like these here. Uh, quick, dirty, and cheap mold that we made, which I was supposed to have right over here, but I didn't. So quick, dirty, and cheap mold made out of plaster, made out of lint brushes, and the little things that you hang your flip-flops on. So, um, you know, that was, that was pretty nice. These are easy to make. Uh, you don't even have to make them this fancy. I think just the straight color green, I think they'd work great. So you get two per, per mold there. And uh, yeah, not too bad. So I was very happy with how this came out. Hopefully we'll get uh, some fishing in before uh, this video comes out. Um, you will know because that'll happen right shortly after I'm done talking. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, thank you again for everybody. All the comments, the likes, the subscribes. If you do like what you're seeing here, let me know in the comments. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, you can say that as well. Um, if there's uh, anything you want me to try and, and make or something like that, or um, or you make yourself, I want to know about it, okay? You can email me the pictures of what you're working on down here at the email address that the regular editor will magically make appear as I do this. Magic motion. All right? Uh, thank you again. And you All stay right, here's the first frog. We got it rigged up on a uh, beast hook here. I think that's a number eight. I always like to use a really big hook. It's Texpo, so the point's in there. And he's got his little flappy froggy legs. See how so he does. He is, of course, it's going to sink, but it sinks really slowly. And it comes right up to the top. It's got a great pop. Little walk the dog action there. Beautiful. I think if we get a little bit better color patterns on this, I think it'll work as is, but I think we can make it look prettier. What do you think, regular assistant? Yep, that would definitely look a lot prettier with some color painting with the uh, regular mica powder. We can slow it down. Still stays right on the top. Nice action right there. Notice that the camera picks it up. There are bubbles it makes on the surface. It does make nice gargling noises too. Not a lot of motion with the legs, unfortunately, if we just reel this one in. But I think this will catch us a fish. What do you think? Yep, frog. definitely. And there it is, guys, the frog lure. I think it's going to be a, a working lure here. So we'll uh, test out the other one here, and we'll let you know how that works as well. Hey, what are you kids doing? <laughs>